We have merch. Last year, I made an epic Mandalorian flamethrower gauntlet. Because Mandalorians and flamethrowers are awesome. You know the only problem with Mandalorians? They don't go on any crusades. The Mandalorian Season 2 and 4 Crusaders Everywhere, I hereby am presenting this video on how to make a medieval Mandalorian helmet. I have been having such a hard time settling on the design for this helmet. It is frustrating me. I don't want it to be too close to the actual Mandalorian helmet, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too medieval. There's a happy medium between those two, and I just need to decide on it. Here I've got some of my inspiration. There's been a lot of medieval Star Wars stuff going around lately. A guy on Instagram named Jake Bartok has been doing all these really, really awesome medieval Star Wars artwork. Highly recommend you go check that out. I believe it's at Jake Bartok on Instagram. Really cool stuff. I'm totally inspired. I can't decide. I think I'm gonna go for this one and a little of this one. I need to draw the entire thing. We're going to do copper accents, so the rivets are going to be copper. Visor accent piece is going to be copper. Of course, the front is going to look like this. Now, I had no idea what I was doing because I'd never built a helmet before, so of course, uh, I went online. I found this video on how to make a Mandalorian helmet from steel. It said it had free templates, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I shamelessly stole those free templates, downloaded them, printed them out, and used them. I would recommend you go check out this guy's channel. He's called The Garage Knight, and he's made some pretty sweet armor. 16 gauge mild steel sheet. Now my thinking is, I could have used stainless steel and it would have remained shiny and rust free forever and ever, but I didn't want that. Actually, what I want is the copper and the mild steel to slowly oxidize over time and get rusty. It'll just like look super, super cool in a few months, like a post-apocalyptic medieval Mandalorian helmet. Now I've been getting a little tired of having to use the angle grinder to cut out this relatively thin metal because it sends sparks everywhere and you have to wear a mask because there's dust and it's a pain. So I went down to uh, the greatest store on the planet and picked up a sheet metal shear. Uh, it's electric, looks kind of like a drill and it has these teeth. If this works, this should be pretty awesome. Okay, that's so cool. It definitely takes away more material than just grinding it would, so you'll have to keep that in mind. Look at that. I can just nibble off the little edges. Oh, that is so much better than grinding. I like this thing. Now, boys and girls, this is the top dome. Piece. Can anyone tell me what is wrong with this piece? Ah, yes, that's right. It needs domed. To do this, you generally use a hammer and something called a dishing stump. It is a piece of stump, often, with a basically a bowl cut into it. You lay this on top and hammer it down into the curve, and the metal takes the shape of the curve in the stump. I don't have an actual stump laying around, so we're gonna have to build one. Short build montage, go.
We interrupt this program to bring you Jake Makes Merchandise! I spent way too many hours designing all of these things, so please go buy something, um, because I need money. Also, check out my Instagram, behind the scenes, project updates, all kinds of cool stuff. As well as, ring the bell behind me. To make sure all your notifications are turned on for this YouTube channel. I designed a shirt especially for this video. The Medievalorian shirt. I like that one a lot. Anyway, that's about all. You can go back to your uh, regularly scheduled broadcast. Now we need to dish the top. To do that, I bought a terrifying tool. What is that, you might ask? Well, it's a chainsaw blade for my angle grinder. That is the scariest blade put onto the scariest tool. Yeah, that's just as terrifying as I thought it would be. Yo. I made steel butt cheeks. I'm five years old. Have some respect, I'm making a video in here. So we've got these in the correct shape. The only problem is, as you can see, the texture is super rough. Looks like the surface of some weird alien planet or your great grandmother's popcorn ceiling. The next step is called planishing. It's basically the process by which you smooth out all of these bumps. You take something curved that is relatively smooth and then you take a hammer with a face that is very smooth and and relatively flat. Will it work? I don't know, let's find out. Just so you could tell the difference this makes, I went ahead and put some tape down the middle and only planished this side. A bit time consuming, but man, I am still amazed this was a flat piece of steel a day ago. That took way too long. These copper rivets are gonna look sweet, though. Check that out. And we just take a ball peen hammer and peen it on over. I got two things to say right now. Number one, this thing is turning out awesome. And number two, templates are the worst. But I've almost got the back piece figured out. Fun fact, Jake doesn't like making armor very much. Why, you ask? I'll tell you why. It's tedious. Here is a list of things that is tedious and time consuming about making armor. Number one, templates. Number two, cutting out the metal. Number three, bending the metal. Number four, drilling holes in the metal. Number five, peening the pins. Oh wait, those five things are the only steps required in making armor. And to top it all off, at the end, it doesn't shoot fire or anything. <laughs> I have drilled so many holes. I counted, I believe I've drilled 60 holes so far in this thing, and we're not close to being finished yet. Somehow, um, I'm not sure how, the two sides are not exactly even, so it's not exactly the same length 
for one side to the other. So even though the measurements between holes are the same for each and the holes are in the same spot on the front, somehow they're not the same on the back. So I had to put an extra pin in here to kind of even it out a little bit and I have two extra holes. Anyway. Just figured I'd show you that screw up. This is a bike frame. What we're gonna do now is I want to bend and flare out the uh, bottom back section bit right here. I want to flare it out on the bottom. Let's do it. You're gonna need something round so we can bend this around it to fit the shape of the helmet. Then you're just gonna bend and bend and bend and bend and then bend it back and then bend it again. Never ending bending, really. Till suddenly, miraculously, it fits. It took a while, but I finally got it clamped up so we can start drilling yet more holes. If you ever drill metal, make sure you use oil. Cutting oil, something to lubricate the bit, otherwise you'll burn it up. I'm actually using like honing oil for a sharpening stone. I'm sure it's not what you're supposed to use, but it seems to be working, so whatever. Oh yeah. It's all coming together. That is so cool. Now obviously this is gorgeous. It's so gorgeous that it's too gorgeous, in fact. What we need to do is make this look less pretty, more like this. We're gonna hammer on this copper piece with the ball paint hammer to give it a more rough hammered look. To start bending this to the correct shape, we're gonna start by using this cheap sheet metal brake to put a straight bend right where that line is. From about here to here, this line needs to be flat, not curved. That, of course, coincides with the flat section on the side about right there. Oh my gosh, that's gonna look so cool. There's certain spots I want to be curved, and there are certain spots I want to be flat. I want this spot to be relatively flat, but I want the top to be curved. This spot needs to be flat. The top needs to be curved. You get the idea. I don't obviously have any of the correct armor tools for this, but as you can see, you can make anything work. Gotta get that sharp line. This is the number of clamps it takes to clamp a visor into place so you can drill holes. There is only one thing left to do now. I just went on to Amazon and bought like tactical helmet pads. They're Velcro on the back, and then they have these Velcro with sticky on the back that go inside, and then these Velcro onto those. Obviously this is not time period correct, but when have I ever cared for historical accuracy? Just stick the Velcro onto it. Sticky sticker thingy. Carefully place. So I have a tiny head, and um, I'm gonna have to end up using yoga mat anyway, because my head still is too small for these pads. So I'm just cutting up some bits of yoga mat to fit in here with some more Velcro. You gotta realize, anyway, a medieval style helmet is supposed to be overly large so that you can have a chainmail hood as well as an arming pad, quilted hood over that as well. And then your helmet goes on, so you have quite a lot of padding. Also, I have a tiny head.
The tool recommendation for today, as you probably guessed, is this sheet metal shear. This cost $50 at Harbor Freight, and let me just say it was worth every penny. The problem with cutting out large amounts of sheet steel with an angle grinder is a lot of sparks and a lot of dust, and you have to wear a mask and earplugs because the grinder is super loud. And this is just very clean, it's quiet, it's so much easier to use, and it's pretty efficient. It is my recommendation that if you make armor or deal with sheet steel a lot, you get yourself one immediately. I got an affiliate link in the description down below to one that looks just about identical that I found on Amazon. For your viewing pleasure. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Jake Makes. I uh, really appreciate it. Go now, get off YouTube, get off your behindy, go out into the world and create something awesome. I'll see you next time. Jake out.